Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. If you would take a moment and use that QR code to register your attendance, or you can always shoot us an email and let us know that you watch the service too. We would appreciate that and make sure you include everybody that's watching too. If you're homesick and not feeling well, we certainly pray that you get back to feeling better so that you can be here. Or if you are tuning in for the first time or are a regular visit online, great to have you back as we worship our Lord and Savior on this Epiphany Celebration Day. So let's get going with our opening song. As with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold, as with joy they hailed its light, leading onward beaming bright. So most gracious Lord may we We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly sections of Psalm 72. Give the King your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the royal Son. May he judge your people with righteousness, and your poor with justice. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people, and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. May they fear you while the sun endures, and as long as the moon, throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may the righteous flourish and peace abound, till the moon be no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May desert tribes bow down before him, and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the coastlands render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, 
will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent his Son, Jesus, to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. The Old Testament reading for the Epiphany of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, 
how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given, to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to go to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Hi, boys and girls. This is Deaconess Kim with the children's message. Now, have you ever gone on a treasure hunt? You follow the clues, maybe solve a puzzle, search all over, and then hopefully you find your treasure. I like treasure hunts. I think it's a lot of fun to search for a treasure and really exciting to find it. Now today we heard a story about a treasure hunt in the Bible. There were people called magi or wise men who went on a treasure hunt. Did you hear what kind of clue they saw? They saw a bright star in the sky. Then they followed the star all the way from their home somewhere in the east. Eventually, they followed the clues, the bright star, and later God's word from the Bible, and they found the treasure. Do you know what their treasure was? Their treasure was Jesus. They were so happy to have found such a special treasure that they gave Jesus some of their treasures too. They gave him presents, their gold and their frankincense and their myrrh, to show how happy they were. Do you know that there's another treasure, one that is very special to God? This treasure wasn't stored in a treasure chest with a lock, but it was still locked up because of sin. But this treasure is so important to God that he sent Jesus to get it. Can you guess what that treasure is? You are God's treasure. That's why Jesus came as a baby at Christmas. He grew up and his treasure hunt took him 
all the way to the cross. To Jesus, the treasure he would get, you and me, was worth even dying on the cross. You are a precious treasure to God. So what does that mean? If we are God's treasure, how should we live? Now, one way is to do what the Magi did, to show God how happy we are to be his treasure by giving him gifts, our treasures, our worship, our time, and things like that. But we can also live as God's treasures by going on treasure hunts. Now, here's what I mean. First, you can find God's treasures for you. God gives us so many treasures. We call them blessings. Spend every day looking for the treasures God gives us in the world and in the Bible. And also, you can find more treasures for God. God has a lot more treasures out in the world, all of the other people out there. Many of them don't know that they're God's treasures, and we can tell people about Jesus so they can be his treasure too. That's how we can live as God's treasure. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for sending us Jesus, my treasure. Thank you for Jesus, who saved me from my sins. I know that you love me, and I am your treasure. Help me see others as your treasures too. In Jesus' name, amen. Our true and only light, and I take close to sit in night. Let those afar not hear your voice, and in your fold with us rejoice. Fill with the radiance of your To you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So I titled my sermon, Why Bother? <laughs> Maybe you're thinking that's a little bit of an odd sermon for a uh, title for Epiphany, um, but think of it this way. It's always a good question for us to ask about, well, anything that we are doing. Why are we bothering to do this? And, well, many people have asked that question about many different things for sure. So for me today, why bother? Well, I'm glad you're at least bothering to listen to the sermon today. But what I'm working on, perhaps, is a little bit of a rhetoric of entrapment with the words, why bother? The Persian Magi come to Jerusalem with gifts. 
This is probably not an unfamiliar thing for us at all. What with all the cards that are out there that have the kings that are there. It's a very typical epiphany uh, statement. In fact, our banners have the little camels, that one over there. <laughs> for sure, if you are here, you would see that. And the songs, right, even though maybe they get it wrong with the We Three Kings. But I suppose the songs maybe have lost um, ground when it comes to these sort of things with the little drummer boy, right? My Aunt Janice's favorite song, The Little Drummer Boy. Make sure you check out the one with King and Country. That's my favorite right now for sure. But Magi, why bother? Why travel this great of a distance to come? I mean, wasn't there a football game going on or couldn't you have slept in or something like that? I'm guessing traveling on the road during that time would have been a little bit of an inconvenient for sure. Wasn't there something that you could have done better with that money? Maybe a 401k or something along the lines of that. Well, here we are, Epiphany. Epiphany is one of those calendar days dedicated in the church year that reminds us of the importance of sharing the gospel with those outside of the church. Hopefully you're not thinking, why bother? But Epiphany is sort of that thing for sure. It's the Gentiles Christmas. That's one way to kind of look at that. And in Bible class, we're going to look at an article that goes exactly that route, that kind of makes that connection and shows us how perhaps Epiphany is the Christmas for the Gentiles. That is, those that don't know Jesus as Savior. But anyway, as we keep moving on, we understand for sure that one of the responsibilities of Jesus' church, the Lord's church, that which you and I are a part of, is sharing that good news, spreading the good news. We call it the Great Commission in Matthew 28, right? When Jesus says to his followers before he goes back to heaven, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Jesus doesn't give us any other commission besides this one commission. He wants his church to share the good news of Jesus with others, those that do not know about Jesus. Now, he doesn't say, um, well, if this one is too hard, then you can have this other option. No, he doesn't do that. He has no other commission. And why bother? Well, because Jesus also reminds us in John chapter 14 that no one comes to the Father except through him. So, it's important that the world knows about Jesus, that the non-believers know about Jesus, that the Gentiles, those that need to know about Jesus, know more about Jesus. Now we know that it is through the power of the Holy Spirit, indeed, but we also know that the Holy Spirit is working in and through you and me to spread that good news, to share that love of Jesus. And that story, that idea is repeated throughout Scripture over and over and over again. Even today, from the Old Testament, back in Isaiah, we are reminded how that works. When Isaiah writes, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you and nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. You see, this metaphor of light and darkness still works today, and as you can see, even what Isaiah is talking about right there, that light shines through you and me. There's a lot of darkness everywhere today, right? Well, you might be thinking, oh no, Pastor Joe, we're just it's just some parts of Kansas City where there's a lot of darkness. Not up here in Liberty. Uh, we're pretty safe. We're surrounded by a lot of good people. Well, 
Unfortunately, that attitude uh, gets a little bit in our way. And I like this particular Bible verse in Mark chapter 10 and in Luke chapter 18, when both of them record Jesus saying, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. We sort of have a joke in our family, which started from my brother-in-law, that anytime somebody would say that someone else was good, he would immediately quote that scripture, right? No one is good but God. And Joey likes to keep that tradition going in our household too. <laughs> so what is meant by that? Always a good reminder for us to remember that we need Jesus because we are poor, miserable sinners for sure. So first off, we have to remember about our own darkness, right? Without Jesus, we would be lost forever. Darkness. Now, we're not talking about like murders and those types of things. I mean, well, if you're forgiven, even for those things for sure too. But in Jesus, we have to remember that we are in need of forgiveness, that there is still darkness inside of us, that we are still sinful. Hold on, Pastor Joe, right? I'm not a bad person. I haven't committed murder. I haven't done those types of things. Well, I simply tell you, take it up with Jesus. But these are his words. And by a simple test, you can maybe be reminded about this. For example, pretend, pretend every one of your thoughts, every secret deed, every word that you have spoken against another is put on a billboard. Or another way, maybe like the cartoon characters, on a bubble that's over the top of your head. Yeah, you and I wouldn't be very popular for very long, would we? Thank you, Jesus, that our billboard says, forgiven. Good thing that Jesus didn't decide, why bother dying on the cross for that lot? He died for us, to take away our sins, to make us his people, and to help us to shine as his lights in this world. Remembering our sin is a good exercise since it reminds us of Jesus and what it means to be a Christ follower. A Christ follower reflects Christ and his righteousness to others, not pointing to ourselves or our own righteousness because we are after all, poor, miserable sinners. But a Christ follower reflects Christ and his righteousness to others, not pointing to ourselves, not pointing to our righteousness. We know we are not the light, but we know the light. And whenever we get this right, well, that's when we reflect Christ's light in this world. We are forgiven because we have been forgiven by Jesus. We serve others, not because we are looking for something to get out of that, but because Christ our Lord served us. We love selflessly, not because of others deserving it. We have received God's unconditional love, but we love selflessly because that is what Christ has called us to do in this life. That's why we bother, because darkness is anybody that is living without that same knowledge that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's the darkness that we are called to overcome in our lives. We are called to shine the light into the darkness. And that is exactly what our pillar of sowing is all about, helping us to be focused in this life. Christ's followers empower others to know their Savior and what it means to be his disciple by mentoring, teaching, and encouraging, no matter our stage or station in life. Christ's followers cultivate the fields in which the Lord has planted us by sowing the word of God and shining the light of Jesus in all we do, praying for those lost in our midst, and loving others as Christ has loved us. Hopefully when I said the word pillar, you didn't say, why bother? 
<laughs> After all, these are the daily activities and behaviors that help us to understand what it means to be light where God has placed us. This pillar is actually freeing for us because we realize that we're not responsible for the entire world, saving everything that's on the planet. That's Jesus' job. But it keeps us focused on the people that God has called us to serve, to shine His light. The Holy Spirit is working through us. The Holy Spirit is making a difference in and through us for others. We should never doubt that. Don't let Satan make you think that that's not true. Shine the light of Christ, and all you do, keep working at it, well, because the world needs you. On January 4th, 2024, James Emery White blogged the following. David Brooks wrote an important article for The Atlantic that was simply titled, How America Got Mean. His conclusion was both insightful and deeply disturbing. No one denies that we've become a mean-spirited culture. We've become increasingly rude and cruel and abusive and violent. Whether it's toward a waiter at a restaurant, a nurse at a hospital, a teacher at a school, or road rage on the interstate, we've become mean. Coupled with this is our increasing lack of compassion and empathy for others. In 2000, two-thirds of American households gave to charity. In 2018, fewer than half did. Apparently, a lot of Americans are saying, why bother? But that's not what Christ calls you and me to do in this life. He calls us to be light in the darkness, to reflect his love. This is exactly what the wise guys were doing. <laughs> we're going to unpack a little bit more of this in Bible class for sure. But the Magi traveled for something bigger than themselves. And they understood, however it was made possible, that this newborn king was the Savior, that he was their Savior. And that's what you and I know too. Jesus is our King. Jesus is our Lord. And we follow and we serve Jesus because that's what we are called to do in our lives, to the people that are around us, in everything that we say and do. We are to be light, the epiphany, in this dark, dark world. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our worship by the giving of our tithes and offerings, which you are seeing put before you the different options that you have for giving. And we certainly appreciate your continued giving, even though you haven't been able to make it here in person. A great reminder prayer found in our Lutheran service book, hymn number 781, puts this in perspective. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Indeed, we are thankful for the blessings our Heavenly Father has given to us, and we pray that these gifts and offerings will continue his kingdom work among us. Here are some highlights from this week's Team Jesus News. It is time for the Board of Youth's biggest fundraiser of the year, Shakespeare's Pizza Sales. The youth will be accepting orders from now through the end of January. You can contact the office to place your order. And as our tradition goes, the pizza pickup date will be Super Bowl Sunday, February 11th, between services 9.15 to 10.15 a.m. Our next Women's Ministry Gather Around the Tables event is this Friday, January 12th, from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Contact the office to RSVP. You can find out more about these highlights and everything going on this at St. Stephen by checking this week's Team Jesus News. At this time, we make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Songs of thankfulness and praise, Jesus, Lord, to Thee we raise. Manifested by the star to the sages from afar, grant a royal day may stand in Thy birth and death. This morning in our prayers, we want to remember uh, or continue to pray for Troy Johnston and his battle with cancer and also his heart condition. Uh, prayers for Brody Larson and his bone density scan. Prayers for Sophie Larson that has a black spot on the back of her eye. Hopefully they can figure out what's going on there. Prayers for Melissa. This is Ken and Rosella Caldwell's daughter. Her radiation treatment begins on the 8th. And also Madison, granddaughter of Caldwell's having some complications in her pregnancy. Prayers for Dominic. This is a student of Shelley Curtis. Uh, cancer, we had been praying for him in the past and he, uh, had surgery on his cancer and chemo, uh, but now they have found cancer in his lungs. So prayers for Dominic. Prayers for Greg. This is brother of Don Greider that fell at work. Prayers for Connie Gunderson's family. Um, her niece passed away. She was only 43. The funeral will be on the 12th. Uh, so prayers for them. It's in Wyoming for safe travels. And also Pastor Dave is going to do that sermon 
um, or service for the family. So prayers for him too. Prayers for Mike Batista's uh, family as his father, Joe, passed away. Also prayers for the Rosie Manson family um, as at the death of her brother, Tristan, um, the funeral was this past Friday. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that you have made known to us the gift of your Son, our Savior, in the babe at Bethlehem. Help your church never to be silent, to always bear witness to Jesus, so that many others may learn of your great love for them. Use our ministry clarity process to continue your kingdom work in this place. Bless our leadership to guide and direct, and bless our Team Jesus family to be supportive in word and deed of the gospel work in this place, so that your name is glorified in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you created Adam and Eve as the foundation for healthy marital relationships. Continue to bless and bind all of our marriages. We rejoice with Mike and Yvonne as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to be their source of strength and the strength of all of our marriages so that we bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting Father, look with mercy on the sick, injured, and recovering, including Brody, Troy, Sophie, Melissa, Madison and her child, Dominic, and Greg. If it be your will, give them healing, restoration, and strength. Sustain and comfort those that mourn the death of loved ones, especially uh, Connie's family, Mike uh, Batista's family, and Rosie's family. Death is certainly a reminder to us all to be ready for our final call. We pray that you would keep us in that one saving faith until Jesus comes again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you give us new life and the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Bree, Brayden, Maggie, Max, and Tim as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Keep them and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen. Rise, shine, you people, Christ the Lord has entered. Our human story, God in him. Sweet.